Oh, hi guys. Welcome to the latest episode of Cricket Draft Insights. Um, I've been off work this week, but I haven't really had the opportunity to do some sort of player profile videos or top tips video, which I keep keep mentioning. Um, but I've got the opportunity today just to uh, have a bit of a chat. So I just want to talk firstly about a few players, a few players I've tweeted about who've been signed. Uh, let's start with George Bartlett. Um, I picked up that he has a batting average of 29. 800 and eight half centuries. Now, I saw Bartlett score 100 last year, and I think he was dropped early on, and he went on and scored 100. And as I understand it, you know, he's wanting to play across the formats. He hasn't played much T20. He's actually got a really good strike rate, but he's only played about eight games. There was one particular innings he did well. Um, I know in the predicted playing 11, somebody put him down as an opener. I'm, I'm not convinced that's how Northampton should go, and I think he might be in that middle order, but he is up for debate. He could be anywhere in that kind of top six. Um, but again, you've spoken about a number of players, you know, he's 25 years old, that average of 29. So he obviously gets low scores, but he does have the ability, once he gets in, to go on. So now he's going to have the opportunity, presumably, to be a regular, to play consistently in Division 2. At his age, with a bit of experience, obviously determined, having made that move. I, I just wonder if he could it could be a decent little signing, um, you know, make a few 50-plus and... and Hundreds, as he's demonstrated, um, and I would have thought he'll be in that kind of you know mid-range price bracket. He shouldn't be too expensive. Um, you know, he could just be a shrewd one who, who having made a move, could you know could be on an upward trajectory. Another player that I discussed is Liam Travaskis and and Callum Parkinson. I know a few guys, a few of you guys, are obviously keen on Callum Parkinson. He's doing very well for Durham at the moment. Took a lot of wickets in the first class matches in Zimbabwe and in the T20s. I don't doubt his ability in T20s. I really like slow left arm bowlers opening the bowling, and and many of them have taken have taken wickets, and I'd expect them to take wickets. Parkinson is proven in that format, but he's only just got his average first class average down below forty on this tour. And as good a players as there are in Zimbabwe, the, the standard hasn't maybe been as competitive as as Durham would have liked. That said, that their batting hasn't necessarily fired on all cylinders. Some of their young bowlers doing well. Gibson looks impressive. So it'll be interesting to see Parkinson. You know, Parkinson's gone to from Leicestershire to Durham. Trebaski's gone from Durham to Leicestershire. Are these guys going to play regularly, particularly in first-class cricket? Trebaski's can bat a bit. Now, his first-class average is about 46, but he can bat... Um, so it's just going to be interesting to see how they go. I mentioned Moriarty joining Yorkshire, but they've got Bess. How are all these guys going to play? And on the subject of Trebaskis, you know, I've got my eye on Tom Scriven at Leicestershire being in my squad. And it just starts me think, makes me think about subs. You know, when I'm thinking about Trebaskis, if you go for four ultra cheap subs, I think it has been confirmed. I think Cricket drafted tweet 15 player squad. So if you go for those really cheap subs, and I've hinted before, you know, having to make enforced changes, injury or whatever, if there's suddenly some surprises at the toss, it's going to cost you 75 points or more. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been very comfortable with spending 50 points and 150 points, but we're now talking potentially 225. And I just think there's going to be value in, in spreading the love a bit and having some subs who are possibly playing. Um... Because I just think, obviously, obviously, that brings its own frustrations. Because if they do well, you maybe end up frustrated you didn't put them in your 11. But if, say you get a couple of weeks in and a bowler hasn't performed, a batter hasn't performed, and you want to make a change, you feel it's necessary to make a change. Then somebody gets injured. Then somebody gets to the toss. If your subs, if you can't go over 15 players and your subs are all ones that aren't playing, it maybe would have been better having in your squad. Some guys who have played for a week or two, found some form, and of course also go up in value if we did end up you know, transferring them out. Um, so it's just going to be interesting to see what the budget allows. Um, yeah, because I, I don't want to spend points on transfer, so I just think a bit of a safety net is I'll probably pick some ones that might play. And I'm saying, I'm questioning whether Trevaskis will play, but just say if I'm picking another Leicestershire player in the case of Scriven, maybe he misses out. To accommodate Travaskis, you know, and you just sort of mix it up a little bit. Um, but we'll see we'll see what happens come, you know, come the opening day of the season and and what the teams look like, what the conditions are like in, in those first few weeks. And yeah, onto onto bowlers and pace bowlers. You know, I've mentioned I'm very keen, Ben Coke, Sam Cook, um, 
Jack White, Ethan Bamba, these sort of guys. You know, we're looking at the numbers for last year and we feel confident because we've seen what these guys have done last year. But of course, I got a few weeks into last season, you know, I bemoaned my batting, but actually my bowling. You know, I picked Toby Rowland Jones, I picked Shane Snater because they took wickets and they scored runs the year before and they didn't. It didn't at the start of last season. So as reliable as we think some of these guys are, maybe they don't perform in the first few weeks. And then, like I say, you, you know, you've got some decisions to make. You know, we'll see who's absolutely firing on all cylinders um, at the start of the season. It's interesting, isn't it, with Durham playing a bit now, maybe getting some momentum, even if it's now T20 cricket. But of course, a lot of the teams are going on tours, playing against each other, um, playing, they're going to be like the university games. So it'll be really interesting to see, you know, think of my home home county, Yorkshire, some real competition for places there is going to be interesting to see those those playing 11s on the opening day and um, you know, who's in the teams and who's in our team. But yeah, we're nearly there. Less than a month to go. Can't wait. Can't wait to be, you know, racking up some points, going to some games, uh, you know, uh, watching some games, whether it's on, on TV or um, or at the match. Um, but just that thrill of racking up points. And uh, yeah, hopefully do well. Hope you do well. Thank you very much for watching. How's that?